It was around March 2021 that I noticed the beginnings of my hot flashes. One night I woke up with a headache and noticed I was feeling hot in my chest. And to my horror, I noticed I was sweating. As the weeks went by, the hot flashes became more frequent and lasted longer. Knowing that symptoms may last over 10 years and well into post-menopause, I really didn't want to just put up with them or let them get worse so they end up affecting my life. <coughs> <laughs> so in this video I'm going to share what I did to reduce my hot flashes and still do to keep them under control. Natural solutions to reducing hot flashes and other menopause symptoms may not be for every woman but for me natural solutions make me feel more in control of what's happening to my body. To be able to reduce and keep my hot flushes under control, it wasn't enough for me to know that they were due to lower female hormones. I needed to know why they happened and what parts of my body were being affected to trigger them. That way I would know what foods to eat and lifestyle changes to make to effectively reduce and keep them under control without having to take HRT. So here's what I found. The hypothalamus is the area of your brain that regulates and orchestrates the release of your hormones. Within the hypothalamus lies your internal thermostat, which controls how your body senses and reacts to hot and cold temperatures. As your estrogen and progesterone levels drop from perimenopause onwards, hot flushes develop because your hypothalamus gets confused about the fluctuating and declining hormone feedback it gets from your ovaries. If there's a rise in temperature, it senses this rise as being hotter than it really is. So it cools you down by making you sweat and dilating your blood vessels to release some heat. As your body cools down, it causes you to feel colder than it really is. By knowing this, it became clear that it's important to protect our brain's health, not only to reduce and control hot flushes, but also to protect us from brain-related illnesses in the long term. The first thing to do is to add healthy fats in your menopause diet. Your brain is composed mostly of fats. By adding sources of healthy fats in your menopause diet, your aim is to provide the nutrients for your brain to cope with and minimize the effects of lower female hormones better. These foods provide sources of omega-3 fatty acids to support your brain health as well as supporting the production of the calming neurotransmitters serotonin and GABA. These calming neurotransmitters balance the effects of more stimulating stress-related neurotransmitters that may trigger your hot flashes. Sources of healthy fats include oily fish, nuts and seeds, butter, olive oil, olives and coconut. Aim to eat at least three portions of oily fish per week. You can also snack on nuts and seeds, avocados on rice cakes, olives, or use olive oil as a salad dressing. It's important to look at the bigger picture of your life and notice what may be triggering your hot flushes. And this will be different for you compared to other women. The common triggers for hot flushes are sugary foods, simple carbohydrates, caffeine, spicy foods, smoking, and alcohol. As estrogen levels decrease from perimenopause onwards, it affects your immune system, making it easier for inflammation to develop in your body. In this study, it was found that women who developed severe hot flushes had higher concentrations of pro-inflammatory chemicals. In March 2021, we'd had a year of lockdowns and restrictions due to a certain bug going around the world. During that time, our days were spent mostly indoors, freely sitting in front of the computer or TV, and generally spending our days not doing much. That included eating processed foods, sweet and sugary foods, as well as indulging in alcoholic drinks nearly on a daily basis. I knew that my lifestyle and diet over the past year during the lockdowns and restrictions had contributed to my menopause hot and cold flushes developing. So here are the changes that I made in my menopause diet to reduce and take control of my hot and cold flushes. I cut right back on sugary foods and simple carbohydrates, 
Drinking alcohol at the weekends instead of nearly on a daily basis, I stopped adding sugar in my morning coffee and started using sugar-free soya milk instead of the sweetened version. To cut back on carbohydrates, I increased the vegetables I ate per meal and reduced the amount of rice or pasta. If I did have potato as part of a meal, I'd keep the skin on. I also reduced snacking on biscuits and other sugary treats and instead snacked on nuts or seeds. You may be thinking, well, this is going to be hard and boring. And I totally agree with you. Life is too short to lead a boring life and stop eating the foods that bring you pleasure. For me, I want to keep my hot flushes under control. And I see this way of eating and lifestyle as a way to value myself instead of depriving myself or seeing it as a punishment. Which is why if you want to reduce and take control of your hot flushes, it's important to make small gradual changes. And this way of eating may be enough to motivate you to cut back on the foods that trigger your hot flushes. Another way to reduce your hot flushes and keep them under control is to add more protein in your menopause diet. Protein reduces the digestion and absorption of glucose otherwise sugar that you may be eating. This may help reduce the stress, anger and irritability you may experience when you have blood sugar dips that may then trigger a hot flush. Proteins might also help reduce hot flushes because they provide the amino acids that are needed to create the calming neurotransmitter serotonin. Ideally, have a palm-sized source of protein with your main meals which is why oily fish is a great food for menopause, as it provides healthy fats as well as a source of protein in your diet. Plant sources of proteins include nuts, seeds, legumes such as lentils and beans, broccoli, spinach and potatoes. At the beginning of 2021, I bought an electronic scale just to see how much weight I'd put on since my menopause symptoms started. I was shocked to find out that the scale showed my weight was in the obese category, weighing in at 55.5 kilograms. I'm 5 foot and at that time I probably weighed more than I did when I was pregnant with my daughter. We tend to think of hormones during menopause as mostly of estrogen, progesterone and testosterone. But adipose tissue, otherwise known as fat, acts like a hormone producing organ. Fatty tissue also increases inflammation in your body, so it's no wonder that I developed hot flushes. It's also important to make lifestyle changes that support you to reduce your hot flushes. This was one change that I made that really made a big impact when it came to reducing my hot flushes. To lose the weight, I started going out for walks and it was a slow process to begin with. If you've not exercised for a while, take your time building the speed and distance that you walk. You could start by walking around your block or walking for half an hour, two to three times per week and build up from there. By the end of September 2021, my weight had dropped to just over 50 kilograms and that's when I noticed that I was only having hot flushes when I was drinking my morning coffee or indulging in a few glasses of wine. You may be thinking, well, I'm exercising several times per week, but I'm not losing weight, so how can I reduce my hot flushes? It may be that you're going overboard with the exercise during menopause, and you may be stimulating too much stress hormones. Stress is a big trigger for menopause hot flushes, as they trigger the neurotransmitters or chemicals in your brain that then triggers your hot flushes. Overexercising can also increase the inflammation in your body. So by walking instead of running, you're decreasing the likelihood of releasing stress hormones during exercise. This is why from the time I started exercising, I kept walking or working out with weights. Walking in nature or at a park is even better. In this study, it was found that the middle-aged participants who walked in parks compared to participants who walked through urban surroundings lowered their blood pressures and heart rates, improved their low moods, anxiety and depression, and they had more energy. Working out with weights may also help you lose weight faster by building muscle, which uses up more energy, 
even when you're resting. One of the best ways to calm your stress levels and get better sleep is by adding more magnesium-rich foods in your diet. And in this video, I share food sources of magnesium as well as four magnesium supplements that may help you during menopause. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video.